Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to graph an exponential function that will require a translation of axis. Translation of axis means we will be some moving or we will be some sort of moving the x and y axis. And we will use that translation in graphing a given function. Let's say, for example, the function is f of x equals 2 times 3 raised to x minus 1 plus 5. As we can see, we have this base 3 here raised to a certain exponent with an x. So this is an example of an exponential function. So how do we graph this? So number one that you need to know is the parent graph of 2 times 3 to the x minus 1 plus 5. When I say parent graph, or the parent function, rather the parent function, it is where uh, if we will be removing all the numbers and keep the base and the exponent, then that will be the parent function. In this example, that means the parent function is 3 raised to x. That is when you remove the let's say you have this 2 to the 3x minus 1 plus 5. If you remove the minus 1, if you remove the plus 5, if you remove the times 2, then the parent function is 3 to the x. And what is the importance of that? Once you identify the parent function, then the graph of this will behave in a similar manner to its parent function. If it's a negative if there's a negative number before it, then all we have to do is to flip the graph of the parent function. That's basically the idea. But what is the graph of 3 to the x? So in this video, I'm already giving you a more advanced um, problem on graphing an exponential function. So I need you to review how to plot the graph of 3 to the x. But to give you a quick idea, the graph of 3 to the x, since the base is 3, when the base is bigger than 1, the graph of an exponential function goes this way. So it's asymptotic with respect to the x-axis, and it will intersect the graph or the y-axis. The graph will intersect the y-axis at y equals 1. And that's a general characteristic of a function with base b raised to x. Now the other type is when the base is... Uh, less than 1 and greater than 0. In other words, it's a fraction, for example, 1 half, 1 third, 2 thirds, and so on. The graph of y equals or f of x equals b to the x, when the base is a fraction between 0 and 1, it will be the opposite. It will go down as you move to the right, and then it, it approaches the x-axis, so it's asymptotic to the x-axis. Now, this in y-intercept is also equal to 1, okay? So, but going back to the, to the problem, our parent function is 3 to the x. So that means we have to follow this type of behavior is going up and then uh, going up from left to right, okay? Now, depending on the number, like there's a times 2, uh, the intercept is equal to 1 when it's exactly b to the x. Okay, but this intercept will change uh, because of some factors like this two, which I will discuss later on. How will this number or how this number will affect the graph of the function? Okay, but again, what I'm trying to point out here is that you need to know, number one, number one thing that you need to know is what is the parent function of the graph? And that's 3 to the x. It's a base bigger than 1. So it, the graph of the function that we need to graph should behave in this similar manner. It's going up from left to right. Now, once we know that, so what is the next thing that we need to understand? So the next thing that you need to understand is how the numbers minus 1 and plus 5 will do the translation of access. So this is where the translation of access will enter. The general rule so if f of x is equal to some number a multiplied to b to the x, 
um, minus b, uh, minus c, let's use c instead because we already have a b. So minus c plus b, okay? Every time we subtract a number on the x, that means a movement to the right by c units. For example, in this case, we have x minus 1. So the translation of axis, okay, this means that there will be a one unit. The value that you subtract will dictate how many units you are going to translate the axis. One unit, but a minus a number, that means one unit to the right. If this was an x plus 1, then that means one unit movement to the left. Okay, so understand that. A minus a number, so that's a movement C units to the right, and a plus a number, that means that uh, plus C, for example, is that C units to the left. Okay, and in our example, an X minus 1, that means the axis will be moved one unit to the right. What does it mean by move by one unit to the right? So these are your x and y axis. So you are going to move this x and y axis and that is being dictated by the numbers minus 1 and plus 5. So with the minus 1, a movement to the right, 1 unit, so if this is x equals 1, then that means the new axis for the vertical axis will be located at x equals 1. See, one unit to the right there. Okay, now next, what about the plus 5? That's the plus D. Okay, the plus D, on the other hand, will move the x axis either up or down. Okay, so a plus D would mean D units. And a minus uh, D will mean D units down. So in, in this example, a plus 5 to the horizontal axis will now be moved by 5 units up. So let's say this is already at 5. So from 0 to 5, the, the new axis is here. Okay. So now that you have translated the axis, it is now time to select some points. Noting the behavior that we mentioned in the uh, earlier, that the orientation of the graph should follow the one with the, or the, should follow the graph of f of x equals 3 raised to x. And that is by having it oriented going up from left to right. So all we have to do is to replicate this behavior in the new axis, okay? So again, we are already anticipating that the graph of the function will somehow be like this. It's going up to the right asymptotic so let's make this asymptotic with respect to the horizontal axis which is the new horizontal axis before it was the x-axis but it was moved because of the translation of axis okay so it behaves like the graph of y equals 3 to the x or f of x equals 3 to the x and that is going up from left to right okay but this time it must be um, place on the new axis. Now, so that is the anticipation, but sometimes we want to be more accurate about our graph. So to be more accurate with the graph, you need to put some points as our guide because we need to know if it's really, uh, if it is steeper or not, right? Or it is, it could be lower. So we need to uh, see that, okay? So, and to, to do that, we have to find at least two points, okay? And this is where the intercepts will be of help. 
Now, for graphing of exponential functions, the y-intercept is more helpful than the x-intercept because the finding the x-intercept will require the concept of logarithm to find to find the values. Okay, so let us stick now. Uh, let us just stick to the y-intercept as our guide. Okay, once you learn how to solve uh, logarithmic equations, then that's the time that we add the x-intercept. But for now, because we're just estimating the graph of this exponential function, let us just use the y-intercept and probably another point that we could easily find. Okay? So remember that to find the y-intercept, to find the y-intercept, all we have to do is to set our x equal to 0. So f of 0 is equal to 2 times 3 raised to 0 minus 1 plus the 5. So this is equal to 2 times 3 raised to negative 1 plus 5 or equal to 2 times 1 third. 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third and then plus 5. 2 thirds is uh, 2 times 1 over 3 is 2 thirds plus 5 that's 5 and 2 thirds. So it's close to 6. So if we know that this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and this is 6, the 5 and 2 thirds should be somewhere here. Remember, we are just estimating the location of the graph. So that's 5 and 2 thirds. So let that be our guide point. Okay, next. So once we have found the y-intercept, we need another point. Okay, and the best point that you can find is the one that makes this so you get that x that will make this 0 okay so x minus 1 is equal to 0 when x is equal to 1 and you will notice this the same location where the uh, vertical axis is the new vertical axis and that is at x equals 1 here okay that is why we are choosing that number now what happens when you place the 1 on the x so that will be 2 times 3 to the 1 minus 1 plus 5. And 1 minus 1 is basically 0. 3 to the 0 plus 5. 3 to the 0 is 1. So that's 2 times 1 plus 5. 2 times 1 plus 5 is equal to 7. So that means at x equals 1, so if this is 6 and this is 7, the next point that we can use is this. So with the two points and the idea of the orientation of the graph, then we will now have a better estimate of how the graph will be sketched. So from the asymptote x axis, uh, new horizontal axis, the translated x axis, so this is the new asymptote. So it should be asymptotic with to that horizontal uh, line and then passes through this point, the y intercept, and let it pass to the next point. Then let us let this let the graph just go up and up in this direction. And that's how you graph an exponential function. Translate the axis, the x and y, so your horizontal and vertical axis, and then know what the behavior of the graph will be based on the parent function. Okay, Get about two points to guide you in plotting the graph and that will give you a better estimate for the function. Again, we will not be utilizing the x-intercept even if, although in this function it will never cross the x-axis, but for other examples, try to avoid the x-intercept as it will require you some time to find the value and it's a complex solution, okay? So use the y-intercept instead and choose another point. And remember how I got that second point? That is where our exponent will become 0. And we use that because when you raise the base to 0, it automatically becomes 1. Now, if you might be asking, can, can we use another number instead of 1? Yes, you can use 2 if you want. And it will still give you another point. So it will be up to you, but for me, the best second point that you can use is the one where the vertical axis is okay so i hope you now know how to graph exponential functions that re will require translation of axis
Thank you and goodbye.